grew up in Vincennes, Indiana. It's like in southern Indiana. And uh, in uh, uh, 1981, we decided we were going to move. We were going to move to probably New York or Los Angeles. Because at the time, there wasn't uh, an underground rock scene, or at least one that we knew of. There wasn't like clubs where you could play in any city. You kind of had to decide if you were going to actually, you know, make a run for it or whatever. <laughs> do something seriously. So we moved to... Uh, we took a vote, and Los Angeles won out. I think because of the cold weather. <laughs> Everybody wanted to go to warmer weather. So uh, we ended up in Los Angeles in 1981. Uh, formed the, Cal the Lazy Cowgirls in 1982 in Los Angeles. Um, and the band ended in the end of 2004. So that's an actual history record. Uh, history lesson, excuse me. Edit this so I sound smart, will you? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I know that's going to take a lot of work, but just do your best. Uh, as far as, you know, like the Virginia Beach and the Norfolk area, it all came because of Larry, uh, Larry May from the Candy Snatchers. Uh, we played with the Candy Snatchers at a, an upstairs club in uh, Philadelphia. Does anybody remember the name of that? Trocadero? No, it was yeah. upstairs. It was well, called yeah, something, Nick's Upstairs. Nick's, Nick's Upstairs. Nick's. So, upstairs at Nick's. Upstairs at Nick's, <laughs> wherever. Uh, they used to have shows there all the time. We played a show. We were on a tour of America, and we played with the Candy Snatchers. I'm going to guess it was uh, in the mid-90s, right, right around that time. It was an American tour. And... Uh, you know, we met Larry, and he was like a big fan, you know, which I'd, I'd known of, the Candy Snatchers, but I'd never met Larry. I, you know, I didn't really even know who he was exactly. So he came up to me, and we started talking. He was a great guy, and he still is a great guy. I, really, I always liked the guy a lot. And uh, he just told me, hey, you know, we have a, a little scene here in Virginia Beach, Norfolk. You should think about coming here. And believe it or not, on that tour, we had an open, I think, Monday or something, and he made that happen that night and we played there i don't know three weeks later or four weeks later it was towards the end and this was a chicho's pizza and it was fantastic i mean we just didn't you know you pull up there it's a monday night you're in the middle of nowhere no, no uh no insult intended we just didn't know anything about the area you know nothing about it larry said to play there we needed a night we saw this little pizza place we went, how are we going to play here you know uh, but we did, and it was packed, and everybody in that place seemed to know our songs, our music, and uh, again, I think that's Larry Prime and the Pump playing all the music all the time, telling everybody about us, because he's always had kind words to say about me and the bands. Uh, so it was just like, wow, this is really great. And you heard me say this a while ago, and I'll say it on camera. We played at Chicho's again. Where was the other place we played? Route 44. Route 44. And then we played at, what was the final place, the seafood place, the pub? The pub. Okay. They were fantastic. And they just got better as the time went by. And uh, it became like playing in Europe. And I just could not believe the reception we got there and the energy in the room. We're not very, we're not very punk, really. I mean, you know, we're, uh, uh, we're not very very violent and our songs are probably pretty personal but it's a you know rock and roll show and with a lot of energy and hopefully a lot of heart and the people just responded unbelievably i could not believe it in fact you know in fact we i always always tell if i had a new guy in the band well wait till we get to virginia beach it's going to be a great show <laughs> you're going to be really surprised because you're going to think oh no, who's going to go there on a tuesday night at this but it was always great so and larry's the guy He's the one that made all that happen. Mm -hmm. So that was with the Lazy Cowgirls. Now, since that time, um, we haven't seen you, of course, in Virginia, but you've gone on to form the Rank Outsiders. Yeah, uh, Pat Todd and the Rank Outsiders. So can you and, tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we formed and in, in, um, I started putting that together right after the Cowgirls ended. The Cowgirls ended right at the end of 2004. And I knew, too, uh, that I was going to have to... Uh, Something I should have done earlier since they're, it's my thing, you know, the band. So I thought, well, I've got to put my name on this. No matter that way, no matter who comes and goes, they'll know that it's my band. Uh, so that's what I did. I called it Pat Todd and the Rank Outsiders. So I started looking out for people and, uh, 
You know, it's hard to find people that you like that are good enough to play with you and that are committed. And uh, I started with a friend of mine, Nick Alexander, on guitar, and I just built it from there. Uh, actually, two ex Lazy Cowgirls are in the band. Uh, Keith Telligman uh, from Vincent's, Indiana who uh, left the Cowgirls in, in 1990. He's back in the band. I've known him since 1974. And uh, Bob Deagle, the drummer for the Cowgirls, all through the basically the 90s to the end, uh, he's playing drums for us. Excellent. So, uh, you know, that we formed that band, and uh, I think we've already got out a double CD, uh, another CD, uh, three or four singles, and we formed the label Rank Outsider Records, and... Uh, yeah, tell us a bit about the label and what other bands are on it. Oh, you know what? It's got uh, Scott Drake from The Humpers, and it's got uh, Brian McCarty from The Trash Brats, um, <laughs> Stay Singing and the Salt Kings, The Black Jets from Las Vegas, uh, uh, The Black Tongue Bells from here, The Neighborhood Bullies from here. Uh, check out www.rankoutsiderrecords.com. <laughs> That's my plug. <laughs> Good plug. So a lot of bands. I think about 30 to 40 bands now on the label. Uh, hopefully soon Larry will do something. Mm -hmm. So you've made your whole life's work making music, which is so wonderful and I think so, probably so enviable of, of musicians that we know, you know, that, that haven't maybe been able to do that. Um, what would you say some of the, you know, you don't have to say playing in Virginia Beach, but like <laughs> what are some of the... I guess some of the highlights over the years or some really spectacular moments. You know, I mean, there's so many great things. I mean, I tend to, um, there's so many great things about playing in a band. I mean, you know, just play, writing songs and singing songs and playing in a band and, the, you know, the the uh, the uh, feeling that brings you is just super great. I mean, I, if, if you're born to do something, which I was born to do this, no, no no big deal, but just I was. Uh, it's just a great thing, and uh, that in itself is fantastic. I love practicing, writing songs, working on songs. But as far as playing out, so many great things. Going to Europe, touring America by van is just a great experience. I love seeing the country and, you know, the old road trip thing. I really love that. Going to Japan was a great thing. Uh, the, you know, the things that you get to do and the people you get to meet. I mean, everything great in my life, whatever it is, has come to me because of playing. Friends, uh, relationships, uh, whatever, anything at all, perks, all of them. Uh, even my job came from playing music, you know, from knowing people and meeting people. And uh, uh, sometimes, too, people will come up to you and they'll really like a song or they'll like a couple of songs and they'll say something really, you know, sentimental to you about the song or about what it means to them. or, And that's a great thing. Uh, one time a person came up to me and said, uh, he told me, and this was a great moment for me, he told me uh, it was like a show where there weren't very many people there. It was the middle of the country on a Tuesday or something, you know. And he just said, uh, he told me, you know, don't get, don't get discouraged and never give up. And... Uh, that was a great thing to have someone tell you, because not that I would, uh, I think that goes without saying, but it was a great moment. You know, it's something that stuck with me, as, as small as that might be. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you're one of those bands, I mean, I would say almost everybody, you know, um, I know has obviously, you know, heard of you and that type of thing, but you, you're also so influential to so many other bands, probably way more than you realize. Um, that just you doing your thing and being so passionate about it and so in love with what you're doing has inspired probably legions of other bands that have seen you play or caught you at even South by Southwest, you know, an accident or something. Um, so that must be a really great feeling, like to feel like you're in the right place. Well, it's kind of you to say that, and I, I get a lot of uh, things like that. People say things like that to me a lot, and it is great. And uh, you know, you don't know what you mean to anybody. I don't think you ever really know that in life. You know, you may get an inkling of that. Or, but I think the thing is, is I would do it no matter what. And I guess I do have a lot of love for what I do. And it's, um, 
because to me, I mean, I'm going to wax poetic as we were talking about it earlier. To me, you know, like for, for me, I'm only saying for me, not for anybody else. Music is like, you know, it's the blood. I mean, it really is, it ties into everything, you know, to love and hate and family and uh, uh, adventure and and bad things. You know, I mean, to me, it is just the blood. Uh, so maybe that comes across and people like it. I, I don't know. Um, I also... Uh, I'm a pretty harsh judge of my own thing, uh, so this goes to show how bad I really am. But I mean, I you know I judge it, I put a lot to it, and I, I hold myself to a, a certain standard just for myself, not not for anybody else. So, last thing I want to do is preach to anyone or tell them what they need to do, or I have I have no answers, you know, about any of that stuff. But I'm hoping that that's the reason, you know, that you're speaking about because I tried mm -hmm. to do that for myself and. Maybe it's uh, come across to some people. Oh, absolutely. I think when we were just talking about this yesterday, that when you send out, you know, positive and good and you're doing something you really love, you just can't help but influence not people, but just the way events turn out and the way things, you know, happen. I mean, just you send out good and you're going to get good back, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, you just, you give everything you got. You put it out there. What what is it that you put? Whatever your love that you've got inside you, they say. You know, I've heard this quoted by like artists and people that you know that I like. A book, people who write books, people who make movies, people who make music. That you know, you take what you you got, whatever you got, love. You put it out there. You just give it away, and maybe things come to you. You know. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of those things I can't help it anyway, so it's not like some big, uh, I don't want to make it like a big crusade. I think it's just my natural. I can't help it, you know, I just that's just me. Mm -hmm. So so if you hate me, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your songwriting process? I mean, I'm sure it varies per song, but say, you know, where you might get some inspiration at and then how you craft that into a song. Well, for me, er, uh, everything comes out of life. Uh, I know that's like such a cliche, but everything really does come out of life. Uh, everything I see, hear, feel, think about, uh, like, don't like. Um, um, you know, the world's a gigantic thing. It's right there behind you all the time. And there's plenty to get, and there's plenty to uh, write about. Um, you know, it's it can get really pretentious when you start talking about songwriting. But basically, everything we do uh, is really per basically personal. It's not we don't, and I'm not putting this down. I like all kinds of things. We don't sing songs about the kids or about movements or about politics per se. Even though I believe probably everything in the world has some kind of politics, even between you and me, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just, uh, I just try to. I've only. You know what? I have to write something that feels somewhat real and somewhat truthful. If it doesn't, if it doesn't kind of feel like that to me, I just I have to redo it or rework it. Or um, maybe that's come across too. Maybe people know I'm I'm not trying to bullshit them. Maybe I am, but I'm not trying to. You know, maybe that's uh, like you say. Sometimes we get a we get a lot of uh, nice things back from people over the years. A lot of great stuff has been said to me and uh, maybe that's because those people didn't feel like I was lying to them <laughs> so, so I fooled them as they say can you tell us about some bands not that maybe influenced your sound but bands that you've seen that have just kicked your ass or um, just seeing them live or just seeing what you didn't want to ever be um, what are some like big standouts of other bands over the years? Well, for me, I'm going to probably disappoint all the folks out there who are, who are going to watch this. For me, I think all my stuff comes from pre what all this stuff. Um, now that doesn't mean that I'm like old fashioned, it, and maybe I am. I, I don't know. I, I I tend to look for the values that we just spoke about in in things. To me, it would be like. A, I, you know, I could go on forever. And also, I look at things more as like an influence than, a, uh, excuse me, an inspiration than an influence. Because I think if you look at all the people I'm going to speak about here in a few moments, they whatever they have is themselves. They didn't try to imitate another great thing. They may have gotten inspiration from that great thing, but they didn't try to imitate them. In fact, you can't be uh, 
whoever, and I'll name them all in a moment, you know, but you have to find out whatever that's in those people that you like, that you respond to, that moves you, that speaks to you, uh, that seems special or compelling or, or uh, whatever word you want to use. You have to find that in yourself. I think that's a challenge. Like, well, what have I got? Have I got anything, you know, to give at all? Okay. So that's how I probably look at this stuff. Um, you know, inspiration. Jeez. Uh, you know, the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, um, uh, all the great, too many to name, all the great. You know, I love rock and roll, blues, country, folk, punk. Uh, I love the Dolls. I love the Ramones. Um, I love Hank Williams, Muddy Waters. Um you know, I, I like Towns Van Zandt. I like Frank Sinatra. I also like, you know, J.D. Salinger and Bukowski. And I like Frank Capra. And I like, you know, I could go on forever. Or else, Charlie Chaplin. You know, you could never stop talking about the things that, you know, have caused, that inspired Mickey Mantle. You know, whatever. Uh, you could just go on forever. Um, uh, there's just so much. So, so many books, music movies, TV, people you know in your life, you know. Um, I think all those people are a big inspiration uh, to why you write songs or um, what you try to put out into the world, period. Because it's such a big act to follow. <laughs> How are you going to match up to those people? It's impossible. Right. Now, can you tell us, uh, to go back to this, I guess, a little bit about seeing the candy snatchers? Maybe for your first time and what your impression was. Well, the first time we saw them, uh, I spoke to, uh, you know, it was at that place in Philadelphia, Nick's upstairs, and uh, I spoke to uh, Larry mostly, and I spoke to Matt some, and the other guys all a little bit too. And then come to find out that they were all, uh, and Serge was the drummer, at least the three of those guys were fans, you know. I, the bass player, I don't really know if he was a fan of you know, sure. you know, I'm not out here. Are you a fan of mine? You know, I don't even, you know, you don't have to tell me anything. But, I mean, they just came up to me and said, hey, we like your band. We've been listening to your records. And we're really glad to play with you. And um, They were, when we played with them, they were just a straight-ahead rock and roll band. I remember Matt said something to me. He goes, well, you know, we always say that we're rock and roll, but you're a rock and roll. We're more like punk. He goes, you guys are a great rock and roll band. But to me, they were... Uh, that's what they played too and Larry was a good singer and he had a good presence and uh, when we saw them uh, there was no destruction you know they just played good songs and just came out there and gave it their all and uh, and they were really a great band and that's how I met those guys uh, and you know Larry he's just got so much exuberance you know he just that kind of a person and uh, that's you know that's when I first saw them I had heard that you know that I had heard that he had smashed the bottles on his head or cut himself. But, you know, when we played with him, he really didn't do anything like that. He just came out and gave it everything he had. And they were very energetic, of course, and uh, very physical. But uh, he was a good singer, you know, for rock and roll, a good singer. And a very good front man, you know, like came out there and challenged you to not pay attention to him. And I think that's what anybody good does, you know. And uh, So that was my first... Uh, you know, exposure to them, and then really, we only played with them two or three times, and that's kind of how they always were when we played with them. Now, I know that, you know, there have been the incidents where, you know, Larry had cut himself and all the stuff like that, or they he'd smashed a bottle, and, uh, but for us, that was what I know, and that's what I saw. Very nice. Now, um, talking about ba bands now, like when you guys um, when you tour with the Rank Outsiders, what are some bands you've seen? Kind of, I know you probably have them on your label, but some contemporary bands you've seen that you really admire that we should check out. Mm, you know, I don't know that much about contemporary bands. I'd be lying to say I did. So I'd have to, I don't, I can't, I really don't have anything to tell you. Um, <laughs> You know when you go out and you play, uh, so I, you know, and I don't even really want to comment on all the bands or that kind of thing, but but I'll just tell you this, like you know, off the record, when you're out playing and you're out doing it yourself, you're like focused on that. At least I am, and I hardly ever uh, can even pay attention, even when they're right there in front of me, because I'm there to do something, mm -hmm. and that kind of becomes my uh, my thing. And uh, also, it's your uh, 
free social thing and you're out you know doing that and uh, you're preparing mentally and all that so so i really don't have much of a thing to tell you about modern bands especially rock and roll bands i mean are there any i mean you know i don't know you know good question, it's a good question. <laughs> so maybe it's uh, uh maybe it's not something good for me to comment on Gotcha. Well, I think if I was in a band, which I'm not, unfortunately, not talented enough, I would be the same way. I'm sure you would be, too. Like, filming all day today, I couldn't focus on anything but filming. I mean, I was seeing people I hadn't seen in, you know, 10 years. I'm like, cool, good to see it, but i got to get this tripod set up correctly. Yes, yes. You know, like, and until it was all put away. Yeah. Um, so I could, I could understand. I mean, it's, there... It is true. You know, you're there with a purpose, and uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons you're there to do that, and you know, it's uh, as far as like bands, you know, it's just, uh, you know, everybody has their own thing, everybody has their own values, everybody goes for what they go to, and uh, uh, so I'm pretty, uh, I'm not one to be speaking about new rock and roll bands, I, I don't even know if there are any that, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. How about the best one I can think of is Pat the Rick. <laughs> That's a good one. So, but then that goes without saying, so. Can you tell us a little bit about your book you've got there? Oh, it's well, you been... caught me rehearsing when you called me. It's just uh, it's just the songbook with all the songs in it, and uh, uh, they're all in there. My whole life <laughs> in there, and in my case, is my whole basically my whole life, and uh, just all the songs are in there in alphabetical order, so I can find them. Can we see you flip through it? <laughs> And a sticker that someone gave me, that's what they said I was. Oh, no. There's a guy in the band that gave me that, in fact. <laughs> um, just here they are, you know, just uh, uh, a million. In a, and they're only uh, Pat on the rank, out, the rank Outsider songs. There's no Cowgirl songs in here, so there's quite a bit in there. And uh, I write a lot, so I've always got to, the, these are in the, in the working pile. <laughs> So do you so, have several like notebooks of um, lazy cowgirls stuff I, that you've I have a stashed? couple. I have a couple at home. Uh, yes, because uh, we did quite a few records, and uh, so there's quite a few songbooks at home. Tell us about what else you collect. Uh, well, you know what? I'm a big fan of uh, so many things. Uh, so I have a million records. I have a million CDs. I have a million books. I have a million movies. Um, I have a few guitars. Uh, I am, uh, I mean, that right there is a gigantic amount of stuff, let me tell you, right there. I have, in my apartment, it's just books and magazines and records and CDs and guitars and uh, things like this, songs and bits and pieces of paper. Over there. I'm sure anybody who's out there's written songs knows what I'm talking about there. Uh, just stuff everywhere. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of different things. I really enjoy, in every one of those genres we talked about there, the, the film and such, I have a, a pretty wide uh, swath of things I like. So, What would you say your top, your prized possessions, like the type of, you know, if you had it, be in a desert island or you had to leave your house suddenly, or, or like the top, you know, three things you would grab? Well, you know, I'd have to take the I'd have to take the guitar. Uh, I've I've recorded. I mean, I practiced and write songs with this guitar, this uh, Gibson acoustic guitar. So I'd have to have a guitar. Um, I'd have to have a songbook <laughs> with all you know with all the songs, and I'd probably have to have my case over there, my uh, briefcase. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get up and pan these items. You can cut the pri the briefcase. You can cut the. Are you? <laughs> you know what you can, you can cut the briefcase in later. So you have all three well, things. Yeah. Here. This way you can have all three things with you right now. Yeah. Well, as you can see, they're here now. So there you go. There it is. So those are the three things I'd probably have to have. Of course, usually I, I could cheat because the, the song books are usually in the case. So I'd probably have something else I could uh, get. Oh, I don't know. Oops. 
I'll, I'll give me a chance and I'll get that other third thing that I have to have. Uh -huh. So that was the inspiration for... No, actually it wasn't. It wasn't? No. It's so similar. Actually, the... Uh, it's on the front, what's left of it. Oh, yeah, I have that t-shirt. Yeah, it's all that's gone. That's the logo. It's all, uh, oh, the Lazy Cowgirls. That's the sticker with the horse and rider. Oh, yeah, I've got a tank top on that. It is yeah. just, as you can see, it's been through the, the mill. So. But I'll have to think of that third thing. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> the guitar, the case. Do you have any pets, man? <laughs> I have no pets right now, so. Well, you know what? I, uh, there, I would say a pen, of course, but the pen will be in there. A uh, recorder, a small recorder to record, that would be in there. I still am looking for that third thing. Um, hmm. What, what do you think it probably is? Do you have, like, an album that was, say, signed by all the Rolling Stones? Or... No, but, I mean, I guess if I would have to take one album, maybe I could take Exile and Mastery with me, too. That's a good one to take. Yeah. I could take the small CD player. it fit in the case, and I could take the CD it. It's all about the case. Yeah, see, I can, that's what I mean. You can add to the case, and then you always have that third thing that you could still take. Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. that's pretty much how I do it. Speaking of sin, by the way, did you ever meet them? No, you know, I never have. I've seen them, you know, but I've never met them. Actually, I talked to some people who, uh, when they were doing a tattoo you here, when they were, excuse me, when they were doing a voodoo lounge here mixing, some people I know went down there at three or four in the morning and, you know, waited for them to come out, and they did. And they said they were, uh, it was Mick and Keith, so they were really nice. Just talked to them, you know, and signed some things and talked, you know. I have a feeling that people like, uh, all all the great music people and everybody else too. That if you if you're not trying to get something from them, those people are all probably pretty good people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're probably just like you and me. And you know, right. Awesome. Did you have any questions, Kim? No, no not, not to now. put you on the spot. Did you have anything you else? You... No, like I mean, I just uh, hope that you know we touched on everything that you you know mm -hmm. needed to touch on. I mean. Yeah, and I figured I can... I don't really, you know, unfortunately, I don't have... I don't know the scene or the people beyond Larry and, you know, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that serves your purpose in any way, except for when we played there, it was really great. <laughs> so fun, tons of energy. Uh, a lot of girls came to the shows, mm -hmm. which is great. So many times you go to shows and there was just it's all guys, which... You know, oh, we're not thank really you that for kind of. Saying that. Yeah, I was we're telling Andrea too. The inspiration for all these guys' musics and songs and energy is all the girls in Virginia. Well, maybe not every. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> I got. I was saying maybe not everyone. You know. That was but, something I, I thought. That yeah, it was great. That it was great when we played there because there would be girls there, and it would just be a great thing because, you know, we're not a we're not a uh, type of band. It's not that we're not going to punch your face out. You know, we're more or less. You know, we're, well, we, by God, we want, why we wax poetic. Is what we do. <laughs> Even when we're loud and fast or slow, we still wax the poetic. So, so it was nice to see a mixed. Uh, it was nice to see a lot of girls there too. Mm -hmm. So there seemed to be. I was really surprised by that too. You know, because that unfortunately is not the norm. Right, you're right. You're right about that. Yeah, it really isn't. We call it sausage festivals, or I do anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's Chris.